Welcome to GMAT Tuesdays! My name is Kevin, and guess what? It's Tuesday. Um, today, we're talking about GMAT syllabus. Basically, we want to talk about how to build a syllabus and what your syllabus should look like. Um, I'm going to follow very roughly the format of some of our uh, Magoosh GMAT syllabus is syllabi. Um, I'll have links to them below. Um, we call them study schedules and they're broken down into one month, three months, six months. Um, and so you can take a look at those to see sort of, uh, see more tangibly what I am talking about. Um, so the first thing you want to think about when you're building a syllabus is da -da -da, materials. What materials should you use? Well, I would recommend if you were to only buy one thing, you should buy the GMAC official guide to the GMAC. So that's G-M-A-C. Um, that is the official book made by the people who uh, make the GMAC. And it's a big book. It's, there's a 13th edition out. Um, and that will be the best resource to use if you were to only purchase one thing. If you were to purchase two things, I would recommend that and a premium Magoosh account because then you'll have all the strategies that you need for uh, the test because the official guide doesn't go into strategies. It's just practice questions. Um, on top of that, there's a lot of free materials out there. Um, I'm sure you can find a ton of them. Again, I'll put some links below to some of ours. We have um, idiom flashcards, which are super helpful. We have math flashcards um, for practicing concepts and reviewing concepts. Um, we have an integrated reasoning ebook that's free. We also have a GMAT just ebook, a general GMAT ebook that is also free. Um, you'll find links to those below as well. Um, so all of those would be great resources to use um, during your preparation. Um, one thing to think about is how long to spend studying. Um, the longer that you spend studying, the more materials that you're going to need. Um, and so you're going to need to take that into consideration as well. Um, also, you're going to need some practice tests. Um, it, there are some free practice tests out there. Um, there's the GMAT prep. They have two practice tests. These are practice tests that are made by the people who make the GMAT again. Um, and that's free. And I'll put a link again below to that as well. Um, and Manhattan also puts out a free GMAT, which is awesome. That's really cool. Um, so you can use that as well. Um, and again, if you sign up for a Magoosh account, you can get two um, practice tests from us also. Um, so you'll definitely want some practice tests uh, to help prepare for the test. All right. Um, if you're curious about how long you should spend studying, um, I j there's going to be a video out. It's either out or it's going to be out soon um, about how long you should study for the GMAT. I recommend watching that video to get a sense of how long your syllabus should be. Okay. Um, let's talk about what to do each day. Um, so when you're building your syllabus, you're going to kind of map out what you're going to study, but you need to think about what are you going to do each day when you sit down to study? And the answer is on another board, a little of everything. Um, so don't limit yourself to just doing one thing. You don't want to just do math questions for two hours straight. That is not beneficial nor advisable. I recommend doing a little bit of math, a little bit of verbal, a little bit of reading about uh, strategies or reading about the question types, watching some lesson videos, watching GMAT Tuesdays even. Um, and so you're breaking up your studying um, by doing lots of different things. And that's really going to be most beneficial. And it's actually a lot more fun to have a lot of different things to do and switching between them throughout your study time as opposed to just doing one thing for two hours straight and that's really boring. So um, dedicate, you know, 20 minutes to one thing and then switch to another thing. Um, so I'm going to talk now sort of about the syllabus in the beginning, middle, and end parts. So in the beginning of your syllabus, really the first thing you want to do is figure out your level. Where are you at? What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? So um, if you end up getting the official guide, there's a diagnostic test in there that you can take at the very beginning. Um, that'll give you a sense of where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are, and then you can know where to focus your time. Um, 
Also in the beginning, you want to take the time to brush up on those math concepts that you might have forgotten since high school, um, to start reading, um, and also to just learn about the test. Learn about all the question types, learn about the common wrong answers associated with different question types, um, learn about the pacing that you're going to need to use during the test, trying to just fill your brain with knowledge about the format and structure of the GMAT. That's going to be really helpful in the beginning. Um, in the middle of your studies, kind of the core part of your studies, you're going to want to do practice problems, you're going to want to learn about uh, different concepts, watching lesson videos, um, and I would aim to do about 20 to 40 questions a day. So I know that's a big range, um, it really depends on how much time you have to study, um, but try to at least do 20, and if you have the time, do 40 questions. And again, I recommend don't just do a big chunk at once. Do 10, then stop, review those 10, see what went wrong, check your mistakes, write down what your mistakes were, try to understand how things went wrong um, so that you can avoid them in the future, and then move on and do another 10. Um, in the beginning when you're learning concepts, you, wouldn't, you don't need to necessarily set a timer, but as quickly as possible, turn a timer on and start doing practice problems with uh, the timer so that you can practice your pacing. Because it's one thing to answer these questions without a timer, and it's another thing to do it with a timer. It's much harder with the timer, as you would imagine. Um, another important thing to build into your syllabus is review. I know it sounds crazy, but you need to review things that you did yesterday, last week, or even last month. Um, the more that you can review something, um, the more you're going to lock that information into your brain. You're going to build that information into your brain and make it a core memory. And so, you know, don't write in your materials. Don't like mark answers or solve problems in the book. Do it on a separate piece of paper so you can go back to those problems and do them again. Do problems two or three times. Separate, you know, maybe two weeks between doing the problems. Um, but that sort of repetition and review will help you to understand these concepts um, and really be prepared for the test. Okay, and finally, at the end of your syllabus um, is when you want to start taking practice tests. Um, so depending on how many practice tests you have, um, you're going to want to start doing them either two weeks or three weeks before the test. So below there's links to three free practice tests, so at least three weeks between, before the test, you're going to want to take a complete practice test, no distractions, go to the library, um, go somewhere where you're not going to be distracted or disturbed, and sit down and take a complete test uninterrupted just as it's going to be on test day. Um, so you can practice your pacing, you can feel what it's like to sit for a test for that long, Start building up your stamina um, so you're ready to dominate the GMAT. All right, so those are my general recommendations for building um, a syllabus. Again, we have some Magoosh study schedules that I recommend looking at if you're wondering um, how to build it or what they should look like. Um, and the more, my last point for you is the more that you can put time into your syllabus early on and build up a plan that goes all the way to your test, uh, the more time you get to spend actually preparing for the test. Um, you don't want to have to spend a big portion of your day or even a, a medium-sized portion of your day figuring out what to do. Spend the time right now, sit down and map out what you're going to do each day until the test, and then it's super easy to just sit down and do what you have to do. You don't have to think about what you're going to be doing, um, which will save you a lot of time and energy. All right, if you have any questions about syllabuses and, or you just want to say hello, feel free to leave a comment down below. And I'll be back here next Tuesday talking about GMAT stuff. Be excellent to the universe.